Well, I want to give the following video basically for like a psychological talk that gives you a little more of a positive outlook for the future. I know that there's a lot of people on the internet that are always playing the fearmonger button. And, you know, my, my strategy is more like this. It's sort of like don't be an ostrich. Don't pick your head in the sand. You know, realize that, you know, there's look out for potential contingencies and things like that. There's always problems that can come up, but don't worry about them too, too much. But do some basic uh, common sense pre pre preparatory things that maybe get you by. But one of the common themes out there is almost like the elite got this all figured out. They all got this master plan. Uh, yeah, in a way they do, but in a lot of ways they don't really know the future for nothing. Um, I'm going to go on to a few different abstracts and also also emphasize that the study of classical history which was taught in school mainly back in the 1900s and and uh, I mean early 1900s and also the 1800s and the 1700s is actually very important because it tells you a lot about you know the human element of how things can happen unexpectedly and how people that are depressed minds the most ambitious they seem to have everything all together and it, something changes now with the internet we seem to have at our disposal all this means of communication and those means to you know get information and com uh, communicate collaborate and all this type of stuff and maybe fight back it's a two-edged sword uh, but you know, here, here, I just want to even show, even with the technology, because who the hell knows where this technology is going to go, even in the immediate future. This was back in the 1950s. These people are pushing up this large box onto this truck. You know, like what the hell is this large box? Well, this was a five gigabyte hard drive from IBM. <laughs> five gig gigabyte. You know, back then, five, five, you know, five. Excuse me, five gigabyte, five megabyte. 5 megabyte hard hard drive, 5 million bytes of data. It was 5 million bytes. Oh, my God. It was, uh, you know, just mind-boggling. You know, today, five, five, 5 megabytes is nothing. People are dealing with not just gigabytes, but terabytes, right? It's nothing. And nobody knows where this technology is going to go. Like here, you got the $3,398 10 megabyte hard drive you've been waiting for. Oh, you know, <laughs> poor investment, you know. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> back then somebody would have bought it. I'm sure there's loads of people bought it. But, um, yeah, actually when I'm looking at technology, boy, I used to be into this shit way back before when I first started getting into it. And I said, oh, my God, what a lousy investment this stuff is. Um, but, you know, even looking at some of the companies that grew into these big monolithic companies that everybody's familiar with, Sam, you know, Walmart, Sam Walton. Here's the first Walton's 5 and 10. Little store, right? He never think this guy would get that damn big. Nobody in a million years thought it would get that big. And who can predict this? Of course, if you knew this, you would have bought stock in Walmart a long time ago. Hey, you would have bought stock in Microsoft. Oh, well, yeah, right. Who the hell knows? And, you know, that's my point. It's like, you know, these fear mongers are always saying the elite got everything figured out. They do not have everything figured out. There's no doubt about it. And here I want to go back to some of the classic literature. Uh, year of the Four Emperors during uh, 69 AD in the Roman Empire where they had uh, Galba, Otho, Vitellian, and Vespasian in one year. And nobody really knew how this was going to play out. As a matter of fact, people thought the empire was going to get split in two, which later it did, centuries later. But nobody knew, you know, what was in store for the Roman. You know, you know, in 2020 vision going backwards, everything's perfect vision. It, while you're in it, you don't know what's going on. I do think, though, that the United States is heading for a fall, and it's not because I have negative thoughts and uh, just thinking bad or doom and gloom. But I'm just looking at the debt situation um, and, you know, the trade imbalances. And basically the way the makeup of people are today, they're not as rugged and industrialist and, uh, you know, the integrity. People are out for money, 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 that type of stuff. 
you know, back during the time of the Roman Empire, nobody knew how this was going to play out. Nobody knew, you know, Nero died, and then, you know, I think he committed suicide. And then uh, the 70, it was uh, Galba came on, he was 73 years old. He never expected he was going to die as emperor, real have a short life as emperor. You know, he, he was, you know, he was in charge of all these troops. He thought everything would be fine. Then Otho came on, and Vitellius, Vitellius was an unscrupulous bastard. Then Vespasian, Vespasian, nobody would have thought 10 years prior that this guy would be emperor, you know, back in 59 A.D., became emperor, I think, in 70 A.D. Nobody would have ever thought he would have been emperor. Nobody. Nobody. And during his time, this was when, this was also the time of the great Jewish revolt and destruction of the Second Temple. And, you know, Jews that were revolting at the time never thought it was going to play out the way it played out. You know, nobody thought that, or else they wouldn't have done it, of course. Nobody knows. No, nobody knows. And that's really what I'm saying. <laughs> It's like, you know, these fear mongers are always playing these games. It's, you know, you got to just stick with the basics, common sense. And even when it looks like the elite got a spot at cojones, they don't. As a matter of fact, there's always these, you know, it's, it's like you got to have this in the back of your head that I'll find a way around the bullshit. That's what you got to have. You always got to have that in the back of your head. You got to have a way... That you're going to find a way around their garbage. Where does it will? There's a way. Um, because nobody, it's it's like, this is what burns me up about, I see this so many times on the internet, all these fear mongers out there, you know, this is happening, that's happening. And it's like, first off, if you want to like know what the basics are, pretty much every politician that gets up there, with a lot of power is a lying piece of shit. That's all there is to it. I don't care who the hell they are, you know? Um, it doesn't matter who they are. One of the basic principles of our own government was that divide the power of the government. It's like the more power they got, the worse they are. And, you know, at this time in Rome, you know, this was Rome, the Roman Republic was done. I mean, they were trying to bring back the Republic at this time. Um, even during his time of the four, four emperors, many years after uh, Caesar crossed the Rubicon and Caius Octavius Augustus took over and then Tiberius, you know, it, it was it was already established for quite some, for like about 70 years that Rome was an empire, but they still had the Senate. Um, but there was always this dream of bringing it back. And, you know, and when we're looking at what's going on in the United States, I could tell you we are an empire. The war between the states that happened in 19, 1861 and 1865 pretty much settled that. You know, no more diffusion of power. Central authority is is going you know, to be the rule of the land, and the president would have a hell of a lot more power. And a lot of that was still held in check by. You know, the House of Representatives and the Senate and the Judiciary, but the states lost the loads of power. And also a lot of the checks and balances of the president was, the, was is the, the Bill of Rights, but then, you know, that gets ignored left and right, too. We are, the reality of the situation is the government of the United States is in decline. Uh, maybe the economy of the United States is in decline, but you know, America is still going to be around. America is going to be around in one form or the other. It may morph into something a little bit different, but you know, for you at your level, it's not something you should worry about too, too much. And this is what the sales pitch is on the internet with all these fear monger channels. And I, I put some stuff out, but I don't really go down too, too far down a rabbit trail. I think the one thing that's actually going to affect us the most is going to be the global cooling, which is going to affect, you know, the farm, the price of agricultural goods. It's going to affect, you know, how much net disposable income we have. And that was actually what caused uh, the Roman Empire to uh, get invaded from outside forces, even during their time. Uh, Ares
stories where barbarians were living outside the empire, it got so damn cold they had to go south to get into areas to just to survive. There was not enough sustainable uh, food on the land for them to live, so they had to go south to uh, just to survive. That's what caused more pressure on the empire. But during the time of Rome, even after during the time of the four empire, uh, emperors in 68, 69, 70 AD, Vespasian had finally took over was a guy that was from the old stock, hard-working, frugal, industrious, thoroughly honest guy that was 100% dedicated to Rome. He was not a corrupt politician. And that's what kept then him with his son Titus, the later emperor, that's what kept Rome going for some years after that because if it turned out like Vitellius became emperor permanently for 20 years, the whole thing would have fell apart because he was corrupt as all hell. It was a good damn thing he got killed, you know. So, but Vespasian knew how to play the cards and he won out. But, you know, eventually Rome got split into two. Now, this might happen with the United States, but who the hell knows? I mean, we might have... I personally think, you know, I, I've been putting a lot of videos out about, you know, the Southland and Dixie and stuff, but, you know, it might be coming up, and it's almost like that story with Sam Walton, you know, you're thinking, ah, what's Sam Walton way back when, when he was a five and ten cent store, or what the hell was his computer five hard, five uh, megabyte drive that you, you had to put in a truck, you know, what good is that crap, right? Well... You don't know the future. I think what's going to actually cause... The United States might get split in the toe. And we might be the Southland is going to be the strong part of the United States. Currently, it's not. You know, you know, the North is the big strong part, but it's mainly due to finance, banking, and other stuff like that. But, you know, that could get upside down pretty damn quick. Tell me, tell me that can't happen. That could definitely happen. I'm almost drawing an analogy between the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire, which happened later on when the Roman Empire was split, where I think it's going to become the North United States and the South United States. Um, they're going to be joined, but we might have a little bit of a split, and that's going to work out whereby the South survives as an American country much, much longer than the North, and I think that's partly going to be due to climate change, where we're going into this uh, grand solar minimum, where the North's going to get too damn cold to be uh, practical to farm, and uh, it's not going to be a nice place to live, where you have, you know, snow in September and stuff like that, you know. It's going to be a lot of problems. It's going to be a lot of problems. So, um, unexpected, unexpected, but you know, History is full of unexpected events. Now, if you look back during the time when America was colonized, America was like, what the hell's America? You know, the colonies. What the hell was in the colonies? You know, the British were looking at the colonies like, it's just some backwoods nothing. You know, what the hell is this garbage? It's nothing. It's like it might as well be on the moon, right? And it's almost like... Um, us looking at Antarctica or something, you know, I mean, what the hell, was it? what is it? Nothing. I mean, it's nothing there. It's like, and nobody would ever expect it that America would have ever grown into this superpower. I'm going to tell you, just give it a little enough time and things will change. Now, eventually, I think, you know, it may turn out that, you know, China might get strong again. It might be uh, it might be Africa. Maybe Africa is going to get strong. I don't know. Maybe Africa hasn't been strong, you know, in the last you know so many thousands of years. But who knows? If if uh, Europe and Russia and most of North America gets too damn cold to be inhabited, you know, maybe a lot of people move down to Africa. It'll be a whole bunch of different people down there, Asians and the Caucasians and blacks and be a whole nother mix of people and then African nations might get strong. I don't know. It could be that way someday, 100 years from now. But nobody that's an elitist knows the future. The elitists back during the colonies times, they thought America is never going to be nothing. They, they always thought America is going to be 
garbage. Nothing, right? It's just some colonies. They would have never thought America would have 200 years from, you know, 17, I mean, 200 years, even 150 years from like 1770 to uh, 1920. Nobody would have ever expected that America would have been that different in Great Britain in 1770 to 1920. Nobody would ever expect that in a million years. So the elite don't know any. They don't know the future. Nobody knows the future. And this is one of the reasons why you really shouldn't worry about this shit too, too much. But you shouldn't be an ostrich either. It's almost like, whatever, you know. <laughs> I personally do think, though, we're going to wind up being split in this nation. I think the United States might split into two or three nations, maybe, if there's a major cataclysmic uh, economic crash. It might happen that way. I don't know. And partly, it might be because of weather changes. Now, weather changes is really what caused the invasion of the Romans. You know, when it, when the uh, the Vandals came down, and the Huns came down, and the Visigoths and the Franks, whatever, and the Ostrogoths, it was pressure because of you know, the weather changed, the, the Roman war- warming period ended. And the Roman warming period was actually a lot warmer than it. The current warming period has ending right now. Um, so, I don't know. It's going to be something else. It's something that you don't know. Nobody really knows. It's the exact future. But I have a, like, uh, you know, I keep an open mind. And one thing I do like to, I used to like to study a lot of the classic Roman history. Way back in the day. I mean, it was many decades ago. I read like 50 books on you know, Roman history. You know, Titus Livius, even Suetonius, which was not really a, an historical work. It was sort of like the rumors that the Romans were talking about the first 12 Caesars. And, uh,. Main, I also read Edward Gibbons' uh, Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. I think I read that about four or five times. Uh, but it's interesting that nobody really knew what the hell was going on back then, no matter who, how smart they were. Nobody knew the future. <laughs> These guys were smart, man. These guys were very smart. Um, they didn't have computers back then, but well, they what they had back then was they had these... Uh, well, they call them slaves. I guess they were slaves, but it was almost like different from slaves like you think in the today's, you know, today. There were slaves that were intellectual slaves. They would be, um, they would know all the data for where the army was, or there'd be somebody else that would know everything about uh, what the Roman laws were. And this guy would just talk to him, and he just get all that. It was almost like there were data banks. You know, it was almost like he used these people that were specially trained in their fields. And, um, you know, the guy that was in charge was able to access the information from people that he had, that he basically kept that were um, almost like computer data banks. And I guess it even worked better than even the computer itself because, you know, a person would be telling you, I know that, you know, the Roman army is located here right now and the strength is this much and I know that the Roman law says this and you get that from somebody else's information. These guys are very smart and they would still make mistakes. But a lot of times the people that still came out ahead were the ones with the most principles and were from the old school Roman stock like Vespasian probably saying his name wrong, but there's another way to say that, I think, in Latin, but I always say it the English way, Vespasian, I don't know, maybe that's not the right way to say it, but, um, but you know, back at the time, you know, nobody really knew, and, like, the more, usually the people with the biggest egos, were those, those are the ones that fell the hardest. That That's usually one of the lessons I got from the Roman, studying the Roman emperors. Some cases it wasn't that way, but usually it was that way. The most corrupt, the ones with the biggest egos, 
they're the ones that fell the hardest. Even though it didn't seem that way for so many years, but when they fell, they fell. Now this SPQR means uh, the Senate and the people of Rome in Latin or something like that. That was one of the things they used to have at the head of the legions with the eagle, which is uh, kind of like... Uh, you know, it's it, very much analogous to what the American... It, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of analogies between the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire and what the birth that was given on this side of the world in the Western Hemisphere to uh, America, the United States of America. So, I, you know, I look at it like this. You know, I look at a lot of the history lessons from this time are very applicable to today. Nobody knew exactly when to... You know, like, in other words, there was times when it looked like the Roman Empire was in dire straits, and then there could be a time of, you know, during the time of the two Antonis, I think it was, the Pax Romana, lasting 180 years. Um, you know, everything was fine for a long period of time. You know, I have no idea what's going to happen with Trump. I have no idea that if he's going to be you know, I mean, I'm glad Hillary is in there. If Hillary was in there, we'd be going into severe decline right now. Um, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know, 100%. But I do think, though, the United States is in a decline because we no longer are a true republic. We are more of an empire. And if we can't restore the republic... We're going to go to decline because the only way an empire is going to continue is if we have an extremely good, just leader in the presidency. And, you know, that's more than likely that's not going to continue that way. Right now with Trump, it's probably the best we could hope for. I'm not saying the guy's perfect, but nobody is. Um, but, you know, when I look at it like this. There's going to be a lot of upstart nations that are going to come on the scenes, and we probably don't know who they are. I think any place that allows its citizens to openly th uh, thrive with as, as little regulation as possible is going to be the nation that's going to start coming on the strongest, whatever that nation is. Just like even in business, when you're presenting something that is, you know, a little bit in tune with what the consumer wants and you're following exactly uh, not a rigid model but you know you're listening to the consumer like what Walton did Sam Walton did in the first in the beginning um, you, you know it's going to take off the United States has gotten to the point where we've been micromanaged and that's why I think we're going down but uh, you know if it falls apart and we get split into maybe two or three different nations, and it gets deregulated, we're probably going to get strong again. That's the way I look at it, you know. Who the hell knows? But nobody, flat out nobody, knows the exact future. That includes the brightest minds, the elitists. The elitists couldn't predict even 20 years out, 10 years out, 5 years out, not alone, 50 years out. So... You know, I and it doesn't take much to upset the best laid plans. The history from the emperors, you know, from the Roman emperors, you know, when Galba thought he took over <laughs> when he was 73 years old, he was at the top of his game. Never did he think he would die that year. Otho, four year, four, four emperors inside of one year in Rome. Nobody would have thought this would have happened. <clears throat> and then after Vespasian was in, he was it was it was good for ten years, and then his son took over. I think it was the next one was Titus, and it was good for a long period of time. Um. So, you know, the unexpected is what you know happens. So you know, to to think that the elite got everything all figured out, no way in hell. No way no. That's absolutely ludicrous to think that. They don't. They don't. That's why I always used to like to study the Roman history. <laughs> no matter how smart they were, how powerful they were, 
there was always somebody that had set up a tripwire for him that screwed him up. You don't know what could happen. And sometimes the least likely to succeed, succeeded. And this is where you really got to look at it like this. You know, Vespasian never thought he would be, and I'm probably saying his name wrong, um, he never thought he would be emperor, never in a million years. Matter of fact, he thought Nero was going to kill him at one point in time. Um, <laughs> that's he figured. Uh, but, you know, it, it just worked out that way. And the reason it probably worked where he had the best chance was that he, he was from the old school. He uh, was an honest guy. He was a guy that was frugal. He didn't, like, play the politics game. He didn't play the game where I'm going to take all this money and grab what I can while I'm in political office. He didn't do that kind of garbage. And that's sometimes that's the way, that's the way everybody's got to be. And when you're like that, sometimes things come, you know, karma comes favorable to you when you're like that. So, I mean, that's the best advice I can give because the Internet right now I see is full of stuff whereby... You're just scaring the crap out of people for giddy minds for views. <laughs> That's really what it is. And I notice every time I even inadvertently put something out like that, I'm like, whoa, it just takes off. And I'm like, whatever, whatever. But, you know, I'm not really like into that kind of garbage. I'm kind of a down-to-earth, pragmatic person. That's the way Vespasian was. This guy was actually uh, a mule trader. Not somebody you would ever think was a of royal stock. Not in a million years. He was a good military commander, very good military commander. So was his son. None of the Jewish people don't like him because his, he was ordered by Nero to put down a Jewish revolt. Um, but, you know, that was Nero, not Vespasian. Um, or Titus, per se. But, uh, well, I don't want to go down that trail because there's a lot of different things that even Titus said that makes you think it was a little different than what you would expect. You know, he thought Titus had said something where he said it was like the, not the hand of God, but the hand of a hidden hand that caused, there was something else that happened that caused the revolt to be put down. That's what he said. It was something interesting he said. I forgot exactly what it was. Um... But even back then, before Christianity took a hold and people were thinking about God or Jesus, Rome knew what Roman virtue was, Roman knew what Roman honor was, integrity was valued, frugalness was valued, industriousness, industrious, industri uh, hard work, and, you know, intellect. Um, stoic um, forbearance of doing your duty. Those were like honorable traits. Everybody knew that type of stuff. It's sort of like that's ingrained in human nature. At least it is in the West, that's for sure. So, you know, I just want to put this out because people are, you know, it's it's one fear-mongering thing versus another. And I'm like, it's total, it's like, it's, it's the fear-mongers are not inaccurate. They're not, not true, but... Nobody knows the damn future. Nobody knows the future. So it's like, you know, do some prepping. Don't worry about it. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. And stick with the basic tenets of, you know, the old Roman virtue, the old uh, stoic dedication to duty, honor, integrity, and everything will be fine. Because the elite don't know what the hell they're doing. And the more corrupt they are, the more egotistic they are, the more likely they're going to come to a very bad end. If the more hard-working they are, the more dedicated they are to um, the people in honor and integrity, the more likely they're going to be survive as good leaders. That's always been the case. Because, you know, somehow there's a hidden hand behind the scenes there. It's working... You might call it karma, you might call it the hand of God, but whatever. That's just how it's always been throughout history. So, you know, giddy minds and giddy rumors are not where I go for, and uh, not something you should go for either. Over and out.